Good evening, and welcome to Political Forum uh, for Wednesday, April 16th, 2014. Uh, we welcome tonight as our special guest, uh, Alderman Deb Mell from Chicago's 33rd Ward. Uh, welcome to CAN-TV. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm Rod Joy, a board member here at CAN-TV. Uh, Political Forum is a live, interactive call-in program that's designed to connect you directly with your elected official. Uh, over the next 25 minutes or so, we hope you'll have an opportunity to learn more about Alderman Mell and her views on some of the most pressing opportunities and challenges facing the city of Chicago. Uh, above all, this program is about fostering a strong uh, culture of civic engagement in the city. Uh, your voice is a big component of the program. Uh, we invite you to join the conversation uh, and call in with your questions and comments for Alderman Mell. Uh, we'll try to get to that as many as possible. Uh, so feel free to join us at 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. Uh, and Alderman Mel, uh, the 33rd Ward has been a big part of your life. Great, uh, yeah. What can you tell our viewers who may not be familiar with the ward uh, about the 33rd? Well, I mean, the 33rd Ward is, uh, you know, I'm definitely partial to it, right? Because I grew up there and uh, I live only probably like a mile from where I grew up. Um, so roughly, uh, the borders are, um, as you can see there, it's diversity on the south, and it kind of snakes over to Foster there on the north. And then we have, you know, our border on the east is western, and then kind of the river's a border, and then Kimball, Kedzie, um, it goes up to um, uh, Central Park there on the uh on the west. So it's basically um, Avondale, Irving Park, and Albany Park. And it, they're all great neighborhoods. And I'm just a huge advocate for it. And, you know, we're having really great things happening in the ward. Um, we're seeing a lot of uh, interest, a lot of businesses coming in. We have a really cool uh, restaurant that's coming in. Um, so she's from, uh, she's a chef from Top Chef. Her name is uh, Beverly Kim, and she's going to come in and do a great new restaurant. So there's a lot happening in the 33rd Ward. And, uh, you know, I encourage people to come in, eat at our restaurants. Albany Park is amazing for uh, food. And, um, you know, Avondale is going to have, a, you know, a restaurant crawl. And, uh, yeah, it's it's great. And then we have, you know, we have a great park. Horner Park is, is amazing. So, you know, I really encourage people to come out. And, you know, a lot of my friends, like, live east of Ashland. And I'm like, there's a whole nother city, you know, <laughs> west of Ashland. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great place. And we're doing great things. You know, we're really doing a lot of outreach um, with our website. And we have our um, our Twitter account and Facebook. And um, You're active we, on yeah. Twitter. Yeah, we are. We are. I have a, a, a woman. Uh, she's great. She does. Uh, she's a consultant. So that's all she does for us. And... Um you know, one of the things that uh, I, you know I noticed is that uh, you're very involved uh, in uh, transportation issues mm -hmm. in the war. Um, and you mentioned right before we came on the air that you, I think, were experimenting with the new uh, parking app uh, in right. Chicago. Maybe you could tell our viewers a little bit about that. Right. It's called. Um, oh, hold on one second. I'll get. It. I'm going to get it right now because I forgot what it's called. It's called. But I, I was briefed on it today. And they're doing a pilot program. It's called Park Chicago is the app. And what you do now is um, you can just uh, pay for your parking through your phone um, if you have a smartphone. And um, uh, it's, very, it's really cool. You put in your uh, what zone you're in, and then you put your um, license plate number. Great. Yeah, and it's, 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 I encourage everyone to check it out. They're doing a pilot program now downtown. But then in May, they're going to expand it to all the, uh, you know, the parking. So you don't even have to get the little ticket, and you don't have to go to the box. This is Political Forum, a live interactive call-in program. Uh, our guest tonight is Alderman Deb Mell from the 33rd Ward. Uh, we invite your questions and comments for Alderman Mell. Uh, please join us at 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. And I think we have a caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Hi. Yes, I am. Um, thank you very much for taking my call, Alderman. Um, I wanted to ask about an article I read in Chicago Magazine last week that seemed to suggest that the police department had been sort of manipulating the crime numbers to make it appear as if there had been fewer murders in Chicago than there actually were. Um, and I guess with it becoming warmer and the violence seeming to 
ratchet up. I wanted to know sort of your thoughts about that and um, if, you know, the aldermen are going to be putting pressure on the police chief to get those numbers down this summer. Well, I mean, violence is, you know, a big, you know, a big concern in, you know, any neighborhood. Uh, we're seeing a little more um, uh, gang violence uh, and, you know, a lot of uh, graffiti going on up in Albany Park. And I know that uh, our, the 17th district is mostly of uh, the, se the 33rd Ward is mostly in the 17th district. We have a little bit of the 14th district. But um, I know they're doing a great job. I, don't, I didn't see that article. Um, I mean, if that's true, that's, you know, ex I mean, very disturbing. I don't know how you would um, manipulate a... Uh, you know, a homicide. Yeah, I could, um, I could be mistaken, but I think the issue at hand is uh, reporting incidents of crime as opposed to the number of victims of crime. Mm -hmm. um, in, you know, so I, I think that was the discrepancy uh, that may have been, been called out uh, okay. most recently. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, well, that's unacceptable. I mean, we need to know what we're dealing with. And, um, and you know, we need facts, you know, and, and uh, statistics. Yeah. So, we, so we could, uh, I mean, you can't, like, stick your head in the sand you know we have to have uh, solutions and we have to offer these kids like programs and get them engaged and so they don't go I, I did um, about uh, let's see I forgot when it was a couple months ago I did a ride-along with the uh, police department I'm doing another one this Friday from with the 14th district it's from uh, I'm gonna be in a tech car from 10 to 2 in the morning and what I do there is I really get a good feel of what's going on you know and what the police are dealing with and you know, when I was in the car with them um, in the 17th district, we, uh, you know, they stopped this one kid and um, he, because uh, they thought they saw him like selling drugs in the alley. So they stopped the kid. We uh, go and say hi to him and, well, they do what they do, you know, and I'm just kind of there. And they kind of, uh, they see that he just got out of jail that morning. You know, this is a high schooler. He just got out of jail that morning. And they kind of like, you know, had him open up his bag, and there was, like, clothes in there. And what happened was is, um, you know, his parents kicked him out of the house. And so where is he going? You know, so the police were like, you know, they didn't really find anything on him, so they let him go. And, um, you know, he's going to the gang house. They're like, he's going to walk down the street and go into that house. So, um, you know, we need to do something with our youth and, and engage them and, and uh, empower them, you know. Um, yeah, so... I think we have a, another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Hi, uh, my question is about the plastic bag ban. I feel like I heard a lot about it, and I don't know if there's any movement towards that actually happening. Um, I, I couldn't even tell if it was really popular in the, in the council, or what's your impression of it? Oh, you had quite a provocative quote on uh, the plastic bags and, oh, and Chicagoans not being Neanderthals. Oh, I think oh did that quote. make, where, did, where was that quote? Uh, I, I can't recall, oh, but I, I did come across it. Yeah, well, I mean, they were saying, so, you know, I'm on that committee. And uh, there was, it's uh, Alderman uh, Moreno's ordinance, and he's very passionate about it. And, you know, I, I support it. So I think, um, you know, right now they're kind of like working it a little bit to make it more uh, palatable to other uh, aldermen. But um, because on the committee, it was a little bit, I mean, I think it was a little more were in favor, but there was definitely some concerns with, um, you know, small businesses and being a burden to them. We definitely don't want to do that. But, you know, it's an issue. It's, it's, a, it's an environmental issue. And um, I think when, when I said that Chicagoans aren't Neanderthals was, you know, the, the woman presenting, you know, the opposition to the ordinance was like, you know, what are we going to do? Like, you know, we can't, like, figure it out. And, like, you know, we bring a reusable bag and we figure it out. And, we, you know, and, you know, I have reusable bags. Sometimes I forget them. But if I knew that I, I, I needed it, I would, I would bring it. So, yeah, I support it. I think, uh, you know, I think they're trying to make it a little more, um, they're, they're working on it right now. Yeah. And, and I'd be interested if he was uh, in, in support of it. Uh, I think we lost the caller, okay. but feel free to call back okay. if you have uh, yourself an opinion about uh, the, the plastic bag ban. I, I think we do have another caller on the line. A caller, are you there? Hi, thank you for taking my question. Great, go for it. Um, I'm just curious, Alderman. Um, I ride my bicycle a lot in the 33rd Ward, and um, are there any um, ideas to bring around more uh, protected bicycle lanes? Yeah, yeah, there definitely is. So uh, I'm a huge proponent of, um, of uh, 
more uh, pedestrian traffic, more bike traffic, and uh, you know more use of our mass transit. And so um, every month we have a, a, a it's called Trans Transportation Advisory Committee. And they meet and they talk about how we move about, you know, the 33rd Ward. And so what's good is um, on Belmont, we're going to have a, a new bike lane. And um, down Kedzie is going to be a bike lane. So, and we're going to get Divi, which is really exciting. I think we need, um, uh, there's going to be, I think, I'm hoping 12 different stations of Divi. I'm really pushing it in the 33rd Ward. So, uh, yeah, I love that you bike through the ward. It's great. Yeah, and I think the Divi bikes are the biggest thing that hit Chicago since Cows on Parade. And yeah. <laughs> have you had a chance to, to ride a Divi bike? I do yet? have a, a Divi uh, subscription, so yeah, yeah, I do, but it's not it's not anywhere near the 33rd. So, but sometimes when I'm downtown. Great, yeah. and I, I think you became alderman. I want to say in July. July. And you served with distinction previously as state representative for the 40th district. Right. And uh, you were uh, fortunate enough. And your first uh, stint year as alderman to experience the absolute worst winter in <laughs> Chicago history. I think the coldest, the snowiest. Uh, how did your constituents in the 33rd Ward hold up this winter? Well, I mean, I think we did great. So there was that one time, though, where we had the big snow and then the massive freeze. And that was just, uh, you know, no amount of equipment was going to, like, tackle that. So we did have uh, a lot of complaints about that. And... Um, um, and then, of course, like the catch basins, right? So when things started to thaw a little bit, we had a little bit of flooding. But I think we did a great job. You know, Streets and Sands, um, they were really on top of it. And uh, I was really pleased. But it was, uh, yeah, it was like baptism by fire <laughs> with the uh, snow removal. And, uh, you know, there's great people that live in the 33rd Ward. And they really, like, um, band together, you know. And they're out there cleaning the catch basins. And, you know, we're... Um, you know, we're really on top of businesses to, you know, shovel their walk and everything. So I think I think we did OK. I mean, I'm sure there's some complaints out there. I mean, and then we obviously we have the potholes as a result. So we talked about breaking records on how cold this winter has been. I think we also broke some records last month with the dismal turnout for our primary election right. in March. Right. I want to say it was 16 yeah. percent uh, turnout or yeah. voter disengagement. Uh, what are your views about voter turnout in uh, your uh, ward or in your area yeah. and, and, and thoughts about why people should get out and vote? Well, I mean, it's, it's like it's vital, right, for, for people to, you know, engage in that, um, you know, civic responsibility to uh, to vote for your representatives. And I, I really encourage everyone, you know, to do that. Um, I think like, you know, unless it's a presidential election, I think it's, it's usually pretty low turnout. So, which is, you know, it's disappointing. You're watching Political Forum. This is a live interactive call-in program. Our guest tonight is Alderman Deb Mel from Chicago's 33rd Ward. Uh, we invite your questions and comments for uh, Alderman Mel. Please join us at 312-738-1060. That's 312-738-1060. And I think we have another caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes, how are you today? Excellent. Good. Alderman uh, Mill, I plan to follow your career because uh, it's really interesting, and I'm so glad to see you there. And uh, also, well, I, I wanted to quickly say the low turnout for the uh, state government was there because it's the same old story. Working people are sick and tired of being threatened one way or the other. That's all I'm going to say about that right now. But uh, uh, in terms of uh, charter schools, Alderman Mill, I was wondering uh, how do you feel about that because, uh, you know, especially what's happening in the uh, African-American neighborhood, it is the other sign of the most disrespect that anybody could ever push on a particular people. I just wanted to know how do you feel about that. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I didn't hear something. Charter like schools. Oh, I think charter was schools. Question. Right, was right, right, education, right. Uh, uh, question and right, education question. Right, right. Well, I'm, I'm a big proponent of uh, neighborhood schools. I think they're I think they're vital to a neighborhood, um, and we need to put our resources and empower our neighborhood schools. Terrific. Yeah. Um, one issue that's always facing the city is revenue, uh, and I think uh, your former colleague, State Representative Bob Rita, held a, a hearing today with the House Executive Committee around this issue of gaming expansion mm -hmm. and a Chicago uh, casino. 
Uh, do you have a position on gaming and do you support a casino here in Chicago? Well, I mean, I support a casino last resort. Um, you know, there's a lot of, um, uh, there, there can be a lot of ills that come with, you know, gaming in a city. Um, you know, I think if it is done correctly, uh, I think it, it can definitely benefit and bring in revenue. Yeah. There are a whole host of projects that uh, you're involved in, that your office is involved in, and uh, maybe you could say a few words about some things that you have on tap coming up. I think you have a, a clean green event, a community cleanup right. on Saturday, yeah, April this, 19th. This Saturday. Um, you know, come to the office and we'll be there and we're going to go out and, uh, you know, clean up the ward a little bit. Great. And I think you're also involved in a riverfront rehab project and a, a, right. a restoration of the riverfront in the 33rd Ward. Right. So that was, uh, that's, an, that's an exciting project that's happening right now. And, uh, you know, we have Horner Park in the 33rd Ward. So it's... Um, the eastern border of Horner Park is the river. And uh, right now, it, it has a fence and you can't even see the river. It's got a lot of brush and everything. So what they're doing is the uh, Army Corps of Engineers is coming in and they're clearing out the brush and they're grading the river down. And, um, and they're gonna put uh, uh, you know plantings in there, open up the river. There's gonna be a little boat launch there. Um, nothing big, but you know, if you're coming down the river and you just need to like stretch or use a field house you can definitely do that um, there's going to be paths so it's an exciting project and uh, you know it's a little controversial because um, um, you know it's uh, you know it's it's it's, it's going to be a huge difference hmm. so I'm excited to see uh, you know how it turns out I think we have another caller on the line caller are you there yes how you doing Alderman how are you okay uh, the question I have um are you in favor of getting more doggy parks in Chicago? Can you repeat the question, caller? I said, um, are you in favor of getting more doggy parks so I in think, Chicago? Okay. So I think the question is about dog parks. Right, right. And those are also controversial. Um, and I go back to Horner Park. There is a uh, the Horner Park Advisory Committee um and then there's like a committee that is definitely is for the a dog park at Horner Park. And they're thinking big. So, um, you know, I encourage people to, you know, reach out to uh, Horner Park Advisory Committee, their website, and get more information about it. But uh, they're expensive because you can't, um, you can't, the park, di park district won't let you put turf down. You have to put uh, artificial turf, which is, you know, done right. It's really expensive. So, um you know, uh, what happens in Horner Park, and, and I go running in there a lot, is people let their dogs off their leash. And um, I've had a lot of complaints about it. Um, and so what's interesting is, like, I'll go in there and I'll talk to a dog owner and I'll be like, are you in favor of the dog park? And they'll say no, because I think they think of it as like a tiny little concrete, you know, pad. And why would my dog want to run in there when, you know, and they think that if there's a part of the park that's sectioned off for the dog park then there's going to be more enforcement on them you know having their dog off the leash but you can't have a dog off a leash it's dangerous you know and there's a lot of children around so um yeah i'm in favor of a nice dog park but like i said i mean they're expensive this is political forum a live interactive call-in program uh, we invite your questions and comments for alderman deb mel from chicago's 33rd ward uh, please join us at 312-738-1060, 312-738-1060. Uh, and Alderman Mel, as a state rep, uh, you, you defined yourself, uh, uh, you know, a, as an advocate for uh, uh, environmental issues, gun control, uh, fair housing, LGBT and equity issues. As an alderman, how are you branding yourself or uh, what issues are you um, prioritizing? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, transportation is, is, is kind of important to me. You know, how we move about the city and, and uh, alleviate, you know, congestion and, and, uh, and auto traffic. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, just I really, especially in the 33rd Ward, I really want to promote neighborhoods, walkability, um, uh, something as little as like sidewalk cafes can really add a lot, you know, to a neighborhood. We're trying to just kind of clean it up, like um, uh, uh, facades, like building facades and everything like that. And then, um, 
uh, my chief of staff, Dana, and I will go into some problem, you know, we'll just go in problem buildings, you know, and that's, that's also a big priority of mine. I don't think, uh, I think people, regardless of income, need a safe and, uh, and uh, clean building, you know. And what we'll do is, you know, some, we have a few buildings that we walk in and we walk in the building and there's, you know, gang graffiti in the building. And I remember one time we were walking out and this woman, um, she uh, was walking with her two children and she had uh, told me that she was an immigrant from Bosnia and that she was so happy that we were there because she doesn't feel safe there, you know, in her building. And then the landlord is like, you know, some guy in Arlington Heights, you know, who doesn't care and is taking advantage of immigrants in Albany Park. So that's another big thing that we're really, I have a, uh, we have an intern, Jeff the intern, who, um, <laughs> Do you know Jeff the intern? I don't know I Jeff tweet, the intern. About him. But... Yeah, he uh, Jeff the intern bikes. He biked during the polar uh, whatever. Vortex. Yeah, so I mean he's he's pretty uh, intense. dedicated. Yeah, he's dedicated. But you know he's uh, his sole job is problem buildings. So we're gonna clean it up. You know you need uh, everyone deserves you know a safe clean building. Great. This is political forum, a live interactive call in program. Uh, our guest. Tonight is Alderman Deb Mel from the 33rd Ward. I think we have a caller on the line. Caller, are you there? Yes, I am. Good evening. Good evening. A uh, question about uh, potholes. Um, Alderman, are you satisfied with how quickly the potholes are being filled, number one? Number two, if a person basically a day later sees a flat tire, um, is, is that person able to claim? Uh, and how does that person claim You know, if, if, by running over potholes? Yeah, so that's... That's part of the problem is that you need the documentation, like where you got the, you know, what incident. Yeah, the incident. So, you know, it could be tricky if you uh, if you definitely get it the day later. I, I, I wouldn't see how you unless it was, you know, very obvious when you when you went over the pothole. Um, but yeah. And then, you know, it, it, I think it takes a while to get to get the uh, reimbursement. You know, it, as far as filling the potholes, um, you know, I was watching uh, the news the other day, and, you know, Boston has this problem. New York has this problem. I mean, it was a bad winter, you know, and I, I know they're out there doing their best. And, um, you know, I just encourage people to slow down and, and also don't, you know, and I've done it myself where I see a pothole and I, like, try to, like, you know, I'm like, oh, my God, if, like, there was, like, a bike there or something. Um, so just really I encourage people to just slow down and, uh, you know, allow extra time. And we're going to get them filled, you know, and... You know, I know uh, we're doing a lot of repaving in the 33rd, so, yeah. And whether it's Dana or Jeff the intern, Jeff is, the is, intern. This, is this the number one issue that you're hearing from your constituents about is potholes? Yeah, um, and graffiti. Graffiti. Yeah, and you know what? Uh, gang graffiti is, is uh, unacceptable because, um, you know, they talk to each other that way. So, yeah, graffiti, potholes, Can tree I trimming, um, yeah. I think the city has spent upwards of 29 or $30 million on uh, snow uh, plowing and pothole repairs yeah. already. Uh, and I noticed uh, on Twitter, at least, you, you had some comments about the fact that it was snowing on Monday and this has been the winter <laughs> yeah. that, never, that never ends. Yeah. Um, how would you describe the difference between being a policymaker at the state level uh, versus being a policymaker at, at the local level on the council, um, you know, and do you miss Springfield? Well, you know, what I miss about Springfield are uh, my fellow representatives. There is um, a real camaraderie down there because you're all you all go to Springfield and you're you're kind of in a bubble down there, um, which is good and bad, you know. Um, and uh, you know, a lot of good ideas, you know, happen. Like city council, we meet once a month. And we're there, and then we all kind of go back to our wards, you know. And, and what I think is missing in Chicago also is, like, you know, uh, aldermen working together. And, like, what works in your ward? What You know, I mean, it's like we're all in our own little separate areas. And I think uh, I think the city would benefit from, like, um, you know, a collaboration with the aldermen. But uh, I don't miss the drive to Springfield, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, and, you know, aldermen is uh, nuts and bolts. So, and it's um, it's constant. I love it you have the most direct impact with the constituent when you're an alderman. Um, but I absolutely like valued and loved my time as a state representative. We, we did some great things, you know, I left before, 
you know, I could vote on the marriage bill, which was disappointing, but uh, we did civil unions and, uh, you know, we ended the death penalty. I mean, you know, you do amazing things and there's a, a lot of great, especially there's a lot of great young women down there. Kelly Cassidy is amazing and Williams is great. Um, gee, I could just name a bunch. So yeah, I miss them. Yeah. Well, I'm afraid we're about out of time. Uh, Alderman uh, Mel, thank you for being so thank generous you. with your time and thank thanks you for joining us for on Political me. Forum. Uh, in order for our democracy to thrive, we need an informed and engaged citizenry. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, thanks for calling in. Thanks for and, calling. And we invite you to join us next Wednesday at 7 p.m. for the next edition of Political Forum. Thank you. Thank you.